Would you like some tips on how to raise a reader? In this five-part video series that I am kicking off, we're gonna talk about lots of different tips and techniques and strategies and goals that you may have in order to raise a reader, especially in this increasingly screen-driven world that we are living in. So if you're interested in this topic, please make sure that you subscribe and tap the bell to receive notifications to view the other videos in this series. We're gonna go over today babies and toddlers, but we're also gonna go over uh, reading rituals and how to compete against screens and also when kids are reading on their own. Different things, different topics, so make sure that you subscribe. All right, so let's just jump right in. Hi everybody, my name is Karen. Welcome back to our channel called Our House. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. If you'd like to go from questions to confidence when it comes to homeschooling, I'm here to answer questions. And also a big part of the curriculum that we use is about books. And you may see that on my Instagram feed and on Facebook, I'm constantly talking about it. So this is a topic that is very near and dear to me. And I wanna share with you some new things that I've learned from a book that I recently read called How to Raise a Reader by Pamela Paul. I thought it was a great book and so I'm going to share some of those things broken down into different categories. All right so let's just jump right in. Let's talk about babies and toddlers. I want to talk about some do's and don'ts and also how to select great board books. We all know how great it is for them developing their language skills, having that bond, that, developing that closeness, that connection with your child and again introducing them to great language and all the pre-reading skills, all of it. So let's talk about some don'ts. Now, and I read this in another book called Reader Come Home about how the author who was always passionate about this kind of noticed something that wasn't good with all the parents, concerned parents that were reading her books. And that's that they took it to a level where for example, she saw a mother um, at a doctor's appointment and she had a stack of books in her bag and they're waiting. So, you know, she took out the books, but it was kind of like a frantic pace. She wanted to make sure that she finished the whole book. The baby, obviously, um, the baby wasn't really engaged and kind of wanted to walk around or play, but she, you know, wanted to make sure, hey, hey, listen, listen, you know, reading to the end of the book. So obviously this is not exactly the desired effect you want. You want them to love books. You want them to to, you want to foster that curiosity, but you, that doesn't mean that you have to finish the whole book in that one sitting, in that one reading time. And we'll talk about other reading rituals and things like that, but it's just something that for babies at this stage, just pick it up, read a few pages. It's okay if they lose interest and then they want to do something else. Um, you're just introducing the books, you're reading to them, you're letting them play with them, chew on them. That's okay. You don't have to get through every book at every reading session. So that's kind of a don't. Also kind of a don't at this stage are audiobooks and video. Obviously those are not really great for a baby at all at this age. It's better if you can just read to them yourself versus an audiobook. They're not really getting much out of it at this stage. So let's talk about how to select the board books for babies at this stage, kind of some do's and don'ts. So some do's are obviously black and white books. Babies love black and white. It's really great for them and you know visually for them as babies. They're really captivating and it's just simple for them to process. This is good. Also books that where the pictures are very big and there's not a lot of words. This is obviously great for babies. And who do, you know, of course they love flaps and um, little things like this, okay? So yeah, they like this. All right, so let's talk about some don'ts, kind of some baby books that you want to stay away from. Are books that were originally meant maybe for an older child or the book was just a bigger book, and then they try to scale it down to a baby book, for example, like uh, The Snowy Day. This is not really a good baby book. The story is good, obviously, but it was intended for maybe a little bit older children. The book was bigger. And so when they try to force a lot of words into a board book like this, it gets really small like this. It's just not very engaging. The illustrations sometimes just don't translate over if they're too busy, if there's too much going on. And like I said, uh, small text, too much of it. 
So books like this where, ah, it's a book that you recognize, you know the title, and they've tried to make it into a board book is not always the best choice. And I'm going to share with you here a list of some great baby book board book authors. Like for example, Karen Katz, that's obviously a very popular one, uh, Counting Kisses and things like that. We also have Louis Elhart, um, Eileen Crystal for Five Little Monkeys. So I'll put that link, so I will put that link in the description below if you'd like to check out some of those baby books, some of those authors. So that's it for this video and stay tuned for part two where we talk about rituals revolving reading. So make sure that you are subscribed and hit the notification bell to be notified when that video is out. And I will put more information in the description below, some of these book titles, book authors for you to check out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And comment below, let me know which is your favorite baby board book. Do you have a favorite author? Do you have a favorite baby book? Please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And I will see you in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.